Here's the lesson for section 6.2. Um, 6.2 um, is about the equation of lines that are written in standard form. Um, in the previous lesson for this chapter, we looked at lines that were, wit that were written in slope y-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. But not all lines that you're given are going to be written in this form. Okay? Sometimes you'll be given a line that's written to you in standard form. And this is standard form right here. ax plus by plus c. Um, a and b... Oh, sorry, a, b, and c, these are all, they all have integer values, okay? So they're all whole numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on, okay? So there are no fraction values. Um, and a and b are both not 0, okay? Because if either of them would, were 0, if a was 0, x would be gone, or if b was 0, y would be gone, because multiplying anything by 0 eliminates it, okay? So a and b both cannot be 0, and a, b, and c are all integers, so standard form is ax plus by plus c, okay? Um, if a line is given to you in standard form, um, it's not very useful to you because you can't tell the slope and y-intercept from standard form. However, if it was given to you in slope y-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, you'll be able to easily tell what your slope is because that's your m value, and you'll be able to easily tell what your y-intercept is because that's your b value. And this allows you to easily graph the line. If it's given to you in standard form, um, it doesn't give you your slope and y-intercept, okay? So it's more useful to have it in slope y-intercept form than it is to have it in standard form. So if you're given the equation of a line in standard form, like an example one right here, this is in the form <coughs> ax plus by plus c equals zero, um, it's useful to want to rearrange it to be into slope y-intercept form so that we can easily tell our slope and y-intercept. So let's do that for this first equation. So I've got 2x minus 3y minus 6 equals 0. So that's clearly in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. <clears throat> okay? We want to rearrange this a formula to be in the form y equals mx plus b. So essentially what we have to do um, is we have to isolate y. If we isolate y, on one side of the equation, then on the other side of the equation we should have, so y is by itself on one side of the equation, and then on the other side of the equation we should have our x term first, so the term with the x should come first, and then we should add our constant, our b value, okay? So let's get the, let's get this equation 2x minus 3, 3y minus 6 into the form y equals mx plus b. So I've got 2x minus 3y minus 6 equals 0. So I want y all by itself on the left side of the equation, and I want the other terms on the other side. So the first step I'm going to do is that I'm going to isolate the term that has the y. I'm going to isolate that term on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to leave the negative 3y on the left side of the equation, negative 3y, and I'm going to move the other two terms to the other side. So I'm going to move the 2x to the other side of the equation, and what's going to happen, it's going to become a negative 2x on the other side. I'm also going to move the negative 6 to the other side of the equation, and it's going to become a plus 6. So I've done a little bit of rearranging, and now what I have is negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. Now that I have the term with the y all by itself, now what I can do is I can actually get the y all by itself. Because in the equation y equals mx plus b, <clears throat> there shouldn't be anything in front of the y, so I need to move this negative 3 to the other side of the equation. So right now I have negative 3 times y. To move that negative 3 to the other side, since on the left I'm multiplying by negative 3, on the right I must divide the whole right side by negative 3. So I need to divide the negative 2x by negative 3, and I also need to divide the 6 by negative 3. And what I'm left with? y equals negative 2 divided by negative 3, the negatives cancel, and what I'm left with is 2 thirds x, and then 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So now this equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, I have y all by itself on the left, I have that equal to the term with the x plus my constant value, y equals 2 thirds x plus negative 2, or minus 2. So let's um, do the same type of question. Let's practice doing this. Let's write each of the following equations that are given in standard form um, into slope y-intercept form by rearranging it. So 
Here's our first one, 3x plus 5y minus 15 equals 0. Um, the first step is to get the term that has the y all by itself on the left. So I'm going to leave the 5y on the left. I'm going to move the 3x to the right. It's going to become negative 3x. I'm going to move the minus 15 to the right. It's going to become plus 15. So now I have 5y equals negative 3x plus 15. Now what I need to do, I need to actually isolate the y now. Right now it's being multiplied by 5, so on the other side of the equation I must divide everything by 5. So I need to divide the negative 3x by 5, and I need to divide the 15 by 5. So what I have now is y equals negative 3 over 5x. I can't simplify negative 3 over 5, but I can simplify 15 over 5. 15 divided by 5 equals 3, therefore I have y equals negative 3 over 5x plus 3. And this is clearly in the form y equals mx plus b. Okay. So from this equation, I could easily state what my slope and y-intercept are. My slope of this first equa of this equation here, that's my slope. It's negative three over five, and this right here, this constant added at the end, is my y-intercept, my b value. Okay, let's do this question here. So I have seven x minus three y plus twenty one equals zero. So this is clearly in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero. And I should have mentioned this earlier. Notice how the a, b, and c values. So a is seven. B is negative 3, C is 21. Those are all integer values. Okay, We don't have any fractions. Um, but with the equation given like this, I can't tell what my slope of the line is. I can't tell what the y-intercept is. So I want to rearrange this equation so that it's in the form y equals mx plus b. So I want y all by itself. And then on the other side of the equation, I want my x term plus my constant. So um, let's get the y term all by itself. So leave the negative 3y on the left move the 7x and the 21 over. It's going to become negative 7x minus 21 on the other side of the equation. Now get the y by itself. Right now it's being multiplied by negative 3. So on the other side um, of the equation, I must divide by negative 3. So what I have, let's simplify. Negative 7 divided by negative 3. The negatives cancel. What I'm left with is 7 over 3. Um, minus 21 divided by negative 3. So 21 divided by negative 3 is negative 7. So I'll have minus negative 7. But minusing a negative, that will simplify to a plus. So plus 7. Now this equation is in slope y-intercept form. It's in the form y equals mx plus b. And I can clearly pick out my slope and y-intercept. Slope is um, the number in front of the x. So there's my slope, my m value. And here's the constant term added at the end. There's my b value, my y-intercept. Okay, let's do an application question now. So Barney's Bank Facility charges, according to the equation, 2x minus y plus 200 equals 0. Step number one it wants me to do is write the equation in slope y-intercept form. I remember that's the form y equals mx plus b. So I need y all by itself on one side of the equation. On the other side, I need um, the term with the x and the constant term. So I have 2x minus y plus 200 equals 0. So I need to get y by itself on one side of the equation and the other two terms on the other. For this equation, um, I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. I'm going to move the y to the right, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to leave the 2x and the 200 here. And if I move a negative y to the other side of the equation, it becomes a positive y. Now, right now, this equation is actually in the form mx plus b equals y. If mx plus b equals y, um, y must equal mx plus b, right? So I can just simply rearrange this into y equals 2x, 2x plus 200, and I'm done. Okay, that's now in the form y equals mx plus b. Why can I just flip it like that? Well, um, if I tell you that 5 is equal to x, that means that x must be equal to 5. Okay, so using that logic, if 2x plus 200 equals y, then y equals 2x plus 200. So I can rewrite it like that, that way it's clearly in the form y equals mx plus b now. So now what the question is going to ask me, what is the fixed cost? Or um, in this case, fixed cost, they're referring to the b value, the y-intercept. So that is this value right here. So that tells me b equals 200. How do I know that that's my, my fixed cost, my b value? Um, because it's in slope y-intercept form, and the b value is always the constant term added at the end. So it's 200. 
what is the rate of change of the cost? Remember, rate of change is the same as the slope, and the slope is the number in front of the x, the number that's being multiplied by x. And in this case, um, we have y equals 2x plus 200, so the 2 is in front of the x, so our slope is 2. What is the total cost of 125 people um, attend a banquet at Barney's? So if 125 people attend a banquet at Barney's, um, I know the cost is equal to, um, is my y value, so cost equals 2 times the number of people that attend, so 125 plus 200. So the total cost is equal to 2 times 125, which is 250, plus 200. 250 plus 200 is 4, whoops, 450. So it will cost $450. Okay. Um, and remember, if you look back at the equation, um, it'll remind you what the variables stand for. So it tells you x is the number of people and y is the total cost. It tells you that in the question. So it tells you x is the number of people. That's why um, I plugged in 125 for my x value Okay, in the equation. Um, because it tells me 125 people attend, so plug in 125 for x, because I know x stands for the number of people attending. And it tells me to calculate the total cost. I know total cost is the y value, so I've now calculated the total cost of 125 people come. It's 450. It says if the total cost is 920, um, how many people attend the banquet? I know the equation was y equals 2x plus 200. I know y is the cost. So y is the cost x is the number of people. Um, if the cost is 920, how many people attend the banquet? So plug in what I know. Um, let me just make some room here. So if the cost is 920, I know that's my y value. How many people? That's my x value. So it's saying if y is 920, calculate x. 920 equals 2x plus 200. Now just solve this equation for, for x. So move the 200 to the other side, it becomes a minus 200. So 920 minus 200 is 720. That's equal to 2x. Now isolate the x, right now it's being multiplied by 2. So on the other side, divide by 2. Oops, should write equals x. And then finally, 720 divided by 2 is 360. So how many people can attend? Um, if the total cost is um, $920, um, 360 people attend. Okay? And that's it for this lesson. Just make sure you know how to... So the whole idea of this lesson is you want to be able to go from standard form, ax plus by plus c equals zero, into the form y equals mx plus b. So you need to be able to rearrange the equation. Um, the whole point of rearranging the equation is so that you can easily pick out your slope and your y-intercept because you can't do that if the equation is in standard form. Okay, so there are two forms which the equation can be written. Um, what are they? Well, I just went over that. Um, there's standard form and slope y-intercept form. Slope y-intercept form. Standard form is the ax plus by plus c, and remember, equals zero. Um, and remember that a, b, and c are integer values, and a and b both can't be zero. Um, slope y-intercept form is um, y equals mx plus b, where m stands for the slope, b stands for the y-intercept, that's why it's called slope y-intercept form. It's possible to convert an equation from one form to the other by um, rearranging the equation. Rearranging the equation. Um, and three, I just wanted you to um, give you a chance to practice some more of these to make sure you have it down. So if you want, hopefully you've printed off this lesson from jensenmath.ca. Just take a moment, try and figure out the answers to these. So if you want, just pause the video now and um, try these eight questions. So pause it now and try them. Okay, now that you've tried them, I'll just reveal the answers to you and just check your answers to make sure that you got them right. So, let me just find it here. Okay, so slowly just look through your answers. Um, pause the video if you need to, but these are the answers that you should have had. 
Okay. If you have any questions, make sure you let me know. Um, so download the worksheet now from jensenmath.ca, try it out, um, and that's it.